One of the biggest reasons I see people failing, one of the biggest reasons why people lose so much money in fact, is because they don't get any feedback on their store before they start running marketing campaigns. Whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Google, it doesn't matter. If you have a crappy store, a poor store that looks a bit dodgy or hasn't got the required information or there's spelling mistakes or Chinese references, whatever it is, it doesn't matter how many people you drive to your store. It could be 10,000 people, it could be 10 million. If your store doesn't come across as trustworthy, then you're going to get zero fails and this is the number one reason why I see people failing the first thing I'll do when somebody sends me a message on Instagram saying that they're not very profitable or they're not getting any sales and the first thing I'll ask them is to send me their store link because it doesn't matter you could send 10 million people 10,000 people the number doesn't matter if you haven't got a very decent store if it's not trustworthy doesn't have the correct information then you're going to get zero sales so where do you get feedback on your store then if you don't have many people to talk to or anybody that you're working with there are a few places in which you can go number one is to certain Facebook groups and um, for example I run a Shopify group on Facebook it's free to join there's a link in the description below and I freely let people post their stores in that page um, in the group so I to get feedback on it and it's a pretty decent um, bunch of people too and you do usually get some pretty good genuine feedback so that's one place to go number two is to ask your friends and family now when you do put their store in front of you don't just make sure you make it clear to them that they won't offend you if they give you bad feedback so for example then if you show your mum the chances are she's never gonna say a bad word about you and she'll say it's really good even though it might look like rubbish so just try and get some fair feedback on your actual store number three is you could just run some ads like spend 20 to 50 pounds running an engagement campaign and just ask genuine people that you've never met before to give feedback on your store in return perhaps for some sort of voucher or discount because people who are strangers to you they're going to give you their honest feedback and they're going to be your customers too so they're the perfect people to get that feedback from kind of like a side tip off the back of what I've just said is that when you're running ads regardless if you're trying to get purchases etc always be engaging with your customers and ask them what they think about the products etc there's no better feedback about anything than the people you're trying to sell it to and then the fourth and final thing is forums if you're part of certain forums you might have space or not have time to post it in there and ask people for their feedback and then the fifth one I guess a shameless plug um, is you could join my ecom academy everybody who joins does get a free um, store review um, just as a way for me to check it over make sure everything looks good before you start spending money on ads like I said you could spend 10 grand on ads but if your store doesn't look very good you're not going to make any sales moving on to number two then is no social proof now this is something you won't hear many people talk about but it's it's really really important um, for the following reasons really it's your ads are essentially the first impression when you meet somebody so when you meet a stranger um, the first impression they tend to make their mind up about you something like in the first four seconds and it's the same with your ads people are gonna see your ad they're gonna click on it they're gonna to go to your Facebook page and they're gonna build that first impression and make up their mind about you within the space of a couple of minutes so it's really important then that you build that social proof if you have the budget to do it now it is optional but the more social proof you'll have the better your ads are gonna convert it's a fact that's not just me saying that um, people follow people at the end of the day just to give you an example then there's two ads here for the exact same product it's for this anxiety bed does your dog does your dog suffer from separation anxiety and then these guys kind of word it in a different way but essentially it's the same thing this ad over here has six reactions five comments this one over here has 40,000 reactions and nearly 10,000 comments which one do you think people are going to trust more it's going to be the one with the most engagement because it comes across as trustworthy if more people have seen it more people are likely to trust it so methods to build social proof then how do you actually go about doing it number one is you can run page likes campaigns that is an actual marketing campaign objective you can set up in Facebook and a good kind of ad set then will be able to achieve page likes for about 10p and um, 10 cents so if you just dedicate if, if you dedicate a hundred dollars for example then you can get a thousand likes if my maths is correct um, number two is engagement campaigns you can get engagements for about a penny sometimes less depending on the ad obviously so it's a really cheap way to build up engagement super quickly number three is just make sure you use the same post ID for every single ad I've done a video on this topic before but it's a way of just kind of collating and compounding all the engagement you get into one single ad um, in the beginning with small budgets it's an absolute must in my opinion number four is you can buy followers on Instagram again if somebody goes onto your Instagram page and you've got like three followers versus 
say 10,000. 10,000 followers, I believe, will cost you about $50. But in my opinion, um, it will make a huge difference. So if you've got the budget to do it, then by all means, I would recommend it. Finally, then, if you haven't got the budget to do it, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you explain it to your customers because they won't necessarily have, they won't put two and two together unless you tell them. So for example, then with this ad here, what the company or the page running this should do is the first comment should be, we are a new business. Any questions at all, please do let us know. And then at least that way people know they're a new business and won't expect to see the big numbers that they might see from another company. Moving on to point number three then is unrealistic expectations. Too many people are impatient. They try and go naught to, they try and do six figures in their first month, which is just crazy unrealistic. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible, it is. But what I'm saying then is that the majority of the people won't see those kind of results. Please, please, please don't be disheartened if you don't do say 10K in your first month. It's completely normal. If you try and do things too quickly, you're only gonna end up wasting a lot of money. It's gonna lead you to being disheartened and it's gonna lead you to, to giving up essentially. So my advice then would be to focus on learning and testing for the first three months. And you don't have to spend very much, just enough to kind of get to grips with things and just ease yourself in slowly. So these screenshots here then, if you're wondering where they're from, these are the first four months of me being involved with dropshipping. My first month I did 360 pounds, 1200, three and a half grand, and then that fourth month shot up all the way up to just under 20 grand. Now, if I was like most people and because I weren't seeing very good results in the first three months, I weren't very profitable, I might have given up say after the second month or even after the third month, and then I wouldn't have been able to achieve that fourth month which is that essentially that one month set me up to have enough money in my bank account to to quit my job and start doing dropshipping full time so you never know when you're going to be on the brink of that one product and um, that really can make all the difference so be patient um, and don't have unrealistic expectations and another side note on top of that is don't believe everything you see on social media Moving on to the next one then is poor content on pages. So this is a really quick one, but a really important one. And the amount of people I see um, fail because of this, or it's one of the things that contributes towards that failure. Um, and as it says here, then your pages add your first impression as well. So the amount of people who will go from your ad to your Facebook page to check you out, see, see what you're all about basically, and see if they can actually trust you. It'll be a lot of people. So if you haven't got a good Facebook page or a good Instagram page, it's going to let you down tremendously so what you want to do then is just make sure that the last few pieces of content half a dozen pieces of content isn't a lot to come up with and post on your page but make sure it's valuable content that people will want to follow people will want to like your page as a result and ultimately it'll make them trust you and more likely to buy from you so essentially give people a reason to like your page and want to follow you as it says here then kind of a side note um, organic traffic is king the only reason you have to run Facebook ads is because your store wouldn't get any traffic otherwise whereas if you had a really good social media um, Facebook page and Instagram page that had say 100,000 followers on each a single organic post would bring in some customers so give people a reason to want to follow you and stay with you don't just focus on that one sale per customer so in terms of the content um, you can post on your pages uh, number one is memes memes are funny they get people laughing they get people smiling they get people engaging sharing with their friends and people will want to stick around to see the next one that you post number two competitions again everybody loves a freebie to give people the opportunity if you run and make it public that you're going to do weekly competitions then again it gives people a reason to stick with you um, and and follow your page essentially number three is blog posts so for example then if you're in the kitchen niche um, you could post links to certain blog posts that go through certain recipes and then within that recipe you can have upsells that link to the products you're trying to sell so it's a much softer way of selling um, and it's a good way of getting people wanting to follow you point number four is reviews again it comes back to the whole social proof thing if somebody comes onto your page and they see loads of different reviews from previous customers that is a good sign because it will show that people can trust you because there's been pre-existing customers and then the final thing is discount codes and vouchers again like i said everybody loves a freebie given the reason to stick around and on the chance that they can win some sort of discount or even free voucher is a good enough reason for them to want to stick around as an example then of this screenshot as you can see here these this is not what you want when people come onto your facebook page if the last two posts are you updated your profile or you updated your cover photo then that's that doesn't give a customer any reason whatsoever to want to stick around or for them to trust you either so put some quality content on your social media platforms number five is boring and rubbish products again another popular reason I see people failing is they just go for the most boring bland and cheap pieces of rubbish that people just don't want to buy anymore um, so to go through the notes then Facebook survives on content if Facebook didn't have content if there was no content on Facebook then nobody would use it so what that means then is that you're not only in competition with other advertisers 
advertising in the same space as you, but you're competing with meme pages because they're going to be on the same newsfeed. You're competing with their friends because their friends are going to be posting on their newsfeed, other apps, apps on their phone that might send them a notification that distracts them. So essentially you're competing for the customer's attention and boring, cheap, crappy products will not get that attention and you will not succeed. As an example then of a good, interesting product versus a boring, cheap, crappy one, and we have this rocket spaceship night lamp here, which is pretty cool in my opinion. In fact, I think I'm going to buy one of these myself for my office. Um, and then we have this skipping rope here. Everybody's seen a skipping rope. They're really cheap. There's nothing really exciting or new um, about a skipping rope. So which one of these two products do you think is going to get the most attention um, or grab a customer's attention um, on Facebook? It's going to be this one here. As a couple of kind of side notes then, go for interesting high quality products that you can sell for £30 plus, probably because Facebook ad CPAs are increasing. So the more room you have um, to account for that, then the better off you're going to be, the more profitable you're going to be, etc. Moving on to the next point then, the last couple now um, is not legit. The amount of shady people that I see running stores um, um, it's the reason, unfortunately, why dropshipping has got a bad name. But if you stay legit, there's no reason why you can't run um, a consistent, profitable and sustainable business in the long term. So if you're not operating legit, um, if that makes sense, then your time will be limited. So i.e. it's going to catch up to you in the end. Either Shopify are going to ban you. That's usually like the last resort. But most likely then either your Facebook account is going to get banned or PayPal are going to hold your funds. You've seen it many times before. And the only times it happens is when people aren't being legit and aren't running a, a legitimate business essentially so how to avoid getting banned there number one register your business do everything properly from the beginning number two have a business address and telephone number this will also help with social proof the amount of stores I see that don't have an actual physical address or a phone number a customer coming on that sees that it looks shady like if they don't know where to go or they don't see somewhere have, having a premises or somebody they can ring with if in case they have a problem, then it looks shady and people aren't going to trust you. Number three is treat customers fairly. If something's going to take double the quoted delivery time or it arrives broken, um, whatever it is, treat customers fairly, treat them within the law, give them their money back because ultimately what's going to happen is they're going to report you to PayPal, they're going to report you to Facebook and again, it's just going to result in you getting banned or they'll just go on all your social media pages and post that you're a scam and that will scare off any future potential customers customers as well. Don't sell trademarks or illegal products. Um, now you would think that that's pretty straightforward but the amount of people I see selling fake Yeezys or fake Gucci or fake Supreme and then they send me a message saying my Facebook ad account's been banned, how do I get it unbanned? Um, just a bit of common sense I guess. Um, next point is stick to the Facebook ad policy. Just Google it, it will take you straight to it um, and it's not a lot to read but once you have read it you'll know exactly what products you can and can't advertise and then finally create your own content. Again you can get away with it for a certain amount of time but if the original content creator finds out that what you're doing they're going to report you to Facebook, you're going to receive a cease and desist um, and both of those things are something you don't want to get involved in. Moving on to the seventh and final point guys if you're still watching with me uh, thank you very much really do appreciate all the people who watch the um, videos all the way through. Anyway again another biggie this is something that I see honestly about 90% of people not doing they have no budget or financial plan you need to track your finances properly and have a plan of how you're going to spend your money now you might think that um, that's an absolute load of rubbish but it's not for the following reasons really number one is so you know if you're actually operating on a profit or not the amount of people I speak to that will switch ads off or they'll try and scale ads that they think are profitable or switch ads off that they think aren't profitable then it turns out they are you're just losing money you're literally just throwing money in the toilet and you're flushing it down the drain Point number two is so you don't end up committing more and more money to something that is a sinking ship. If you set yourself a budget of say a thousand pounds and you're testing the product and you're 300 pounds into that, that's 30% of your budget gone and it will it will force you to budget a bit more cautiously, spend your money a bit more wisely and ultimately it's going to be help you be more successful. And as it says there, as I've already mentioned, it will force you to spend conservatively. I'm just giving you an example then of how I used to do things. Um, this is a screenshot from the profit and loss spreadsheet um, that I used to um, use. So every week I would come on, put my numbers in and it would tell me exactly how much money I was making or how much money I was losing. And having it like this set out in front of you, then you you know exactly how much money you've got to play with, how much you can commit, how conservatively you have to be if you know if you need to scale things back. There's just so many advantages to truly knowing um, how much money you have to play with.